Welcome to the next lecture on earthquake resistant design of structures. This is module 3, lecture 11. In this lecture, we would be talking about certain features of building design. We'd be also going through certain basic concepts of the building design. Further, we'll be shifting to the masonry construction. In the last lecture, we discussed about the architectural features of the building design. Prior to that, we had only dis discussed about the structural features of building design. Every structural design in earthquake is essential to be done simultaneously with an architectural feature. A building could be l a great building with wonderful shape and architecture but it may not be necessarily earthquake resistant thereby the structural engineer and the architect have to act together in the first phase of the design such that the structure is made earthquake resistant now the architectural features that we discussed in the last lecture they were mostly related to the regular features of symmetry. Now these regular features were shown to be having greater earthquake resistance. They also led to lesser amount of torsion, they led to lesser amount of mass eccentricity and lesser amount of ma uh, stiffness eccentricity within the structure. Now this is a famous quote, if we have a poor configuration to start with all the engineer can do then is to provide a band-aid improve a basically poor solution as best as he can conversely if we start off with a good configuration and a reasonable framing system even the poor engineer cannot harm its ultimate performance too much in an architectural configuration the first important thing to be noted for architects is that the size of the building a too long or a too high or a too wide building where one dimension is quite larger than the other dimension that makes the building uh, uh, one of its section quite larger than the other section and that leads to development of the uh, lateral earthquake forces within that structure and it makes one of the uh, side or one of the plane of the section of the building structure to be weaker as compared to the other one the second important thing then comes the layout of the building now this has basically been illustrated in the earlier lecture wherein the horizontal layout of the building has to be such that it is quite simple not complex now simple plans are good as we see in the figure taken from IIT Kanpur report a simple plan is good while as the plans with uh, re-entrant corners which is curved uh, they are not good for in terms of development of torsional forces within the structure during an earthquake now in the C part here there is a separation joint which tends to make complex plans into simpler plans and they are preferred for earthquake resistant design about the vertical irregularity that we studied in the earlier lecture and we have already discussed this there is a vertical discontinuity of the building due to many things number one setbacks as we can see uh, vertically irregular with lesser or larger amount of base area in the upper floors weak or flexible story usually a tall story somewhere in between or at the bottom see where there is a sloping ground and that tends to make the structure quite vulnerable because there is a lesser uh, stiffness in the ground story as compared to the top story fourth one is the hanging or floating columns 
wherein the structure is such that uh, it has got uh, larger stiffness at the top compared to that at the bottom and then the fifth one the discontinuing structural members where some reinforced concrete wall which is present there in the upper stories is discontinued in the ground story so these all tend to make the structure irregular and dis the third thing to be recalled is the adjacency of the buildings now the two buildings should not be close to each other they should be far away from each other such that do they do not pound during an earthquake with each other that has to be maintained before we proceed ahead what we also need to know is about certain design concepts one of the important design concepts that we briefly discussed in the last lecture was about the capacity demand design concept now this is somewhat like the authors uh, and take it as such is that it's like a chain now if in a chain there is a weak link the structure will tend to break if the one of the links is weak then the structure or the chain would tend to break at that weak link but if this weak link is made more ductile now this link would although it would uh, be weak enough such that it would start to yield first but it would keep on stretching but not fail easily thereby a ductile connection could in a weak link is quite good for a structure now wh why is that because if the weak link is brittle and then the structure fails then the failure could be all of an instant rather than a brittle failure sorry a ductile failure now the same concept can be utilized when we are talking about a structural frame wherein there are weak beams and strong column design the strong columns would mean that they would not fail first and the plastic hinge formation would like to happen more first in the weak beam but if the beams are kept more ductile then there would be lot of stretching and lot of ductile failure of the structure thereby what we observe is that the structure tends to behave much better so a strong column weak beam fe feature is the basic concept in the capacity design of the structures next we shift to the masonry buildings in masonry buildings what we all know is that it consists of a foundation then a wall and finally a floor now these are the three elements of a masonry building but they are all structural elements and they all act as low transferring mechanism for in the building under the action of lateral loads or the earthquakes the masonry walls behave in two directions in in plane there is a push and along this push it's stronger in this direction and thereby the forces that act in the in plane direction of the wall will not tend to topple it in the other direction which is the out of plane if the masonry wall is uh, acting alone without end joint connections with other walls the wall will begin to topple now in this direction the wall is weaker now a good thing to the earthquake loads is that if the walls are interconnected now if all the walls are interconnected at the ends then the walls would behave together and there could be least chances of the walls getting toppled due to earthquakes at the same time it's the wall height and the wall thickness that also decides its behavior to the earthquakes now if it's a tall wall it's not preferred as compared to a short wall a thicker wall is preferred over a thinner wall now this is all to do with the slenderness and the stiffness of the walls 
अब गुड मेजनरी कंस्ट्रक्शन डिजाइन फॉर अर्थ विक रेजिस्टेंट डिजाइन वुड बी सच दैट इट वुड हैव अ फाउंडेशन विच इज कनेक्टेड टू द वॉल थ्रू अ बैंड द वॉल्स आर इंटर कनेक्टेड विद ईच अदर देन द वॉल इज कनेक्टेड टू द फ्लोर थ्रू अ बैंड एंड द फ्लोर इज देन इंटर कनेक्टेड विद द अदर वॉल्स अबाउ इट इन द टॉप स्टोरीज नाउ दिस इज एन आइडियल अर्थ क्विक रेजिस्टेंट डिजाइन प्रिंसिपल दैट नीड्स टू बी अडोप्टेड इन मेजनरी कंस्ट्रक्शन now what are the materials that we use in masonry construction it's mostly bricks and blocks that we are using and they are laid in courses as we have you must have all seen and studied the bricks and blocks should be such that the crushing strength of them is not less than 3.5 megapascal now the code that decides this is is 4392 Four three two six two thousand and thirteen in India, and th- this is from a clause eight point one point one. Now these bricks or blocks are laid in a mortar mix. Now that is defined by IS four three nine four three two six for different building categories. Now category B building here is for zone two, C is for zone three, D is for zone four. E is for zone five. Thereby, grade of the concrete that's used is M three, M two, M one, and H two. The mixed proportions should be these. Uh, what is given? Cement, lime, and sand. Now, this proportioning could vary. Now, we are least concerned with using lime in our motor mix design when we are designing in our case although it gives much better strength to the masonry now the minimum compressive strength at 28 days of the motor mix is has to be such that at 7.5 megapascals for building category E for zone 5 and for zone B Building category B for zone two, it has to be twenty eight one point two megapascals at twenty eight days. Next is steel bars that are embedded in steel, cement, sand, mortar, should have a cover of ten mm each. Now a steel bar that's embedded in concrete of M twenty grade should have a cover of fifteen mm. Now this is as per clause eight point one point two IS four three two six. Now the walls should be at fifteen meter high maximum for four story building. The height should be measured from ground level till ridge of the roof. Now this is eight point two point one. This is the total building height that could be achieved in a masonry construction. Yet again, there is another clause eight point two point three in IS four three two six, which decides about the wall panels. form between cross walls and floors on roof shall be checked for their strength in bending as a plate or a vertical strip subjected to earthquake force acting on its mass now how is that done that is by a plate action wherein the method of design is similar to as in slabs for panel walls of 200 mm or larger thickness having a story height not more than 3.5 m now if the story height is not more than 3.5 and the panel thickness of the wall is 200 mm or larger and it's laterally supported at the top then this need not be checked uh, for the strength criteria further the bond for masonry construction now how is that obtained now the bonds are all laid out in courses but between the courses there should be no continuity of the joint that's one of the things second thing is that to obtain the full bond between perpendicular walls it's necessary to make a sloping stepped joint by making the corners first so we make the corners first of the building and that's up till a height of 600 mm that's one and a half cores at least and then the building 
the wall in between them and otherwise the tooth joint should be made in both the walls alternatively in lifts of about 450 mm so that's how the construction module has to be has been defined by clause 8.2.4 of IS 4326 finally we are talking about the freestanding walls they must be checked against overturning under the action of design seismic coefficient allowing for a factor of safety of 1.5 now the design principle is similar to as was in the frame construction where a design seismic coefficient was uh, given to the structural frame and the base shear was calculated then the lateral forces were calculated similar is the case with the mesonry wall which is freely standing now here one thing to be noted is that the ten tensile strength is not to be taken into account while doing this design